I want to thank you for joining me in this week's episode of Jason Stewart Photography. This week, I want to talk to you about composition. What is composition? Well, in addition to lighting, composition is the single most important aspect that will enable you to capture exceptional images as a photographer. When we talk about composition, we're really talking about how to use the space within your camera as you look through the viewfinder. For example, if you watched last week's episode on my four essential rules to photography, uh, you might remember that I talked about rule one is having a clear subject. R rule two is surroundings, checking my surroundings. Rule three was simplicity and rule four was making sure I had the correct settings. Well, each time I look through the viewfinder of my camera, when we talk about this concept of how to use the space within your camera, each time I'm looking through the viewfinder of my camera, I'm applying those four rules. I'm making sure that I have a clear subject. I'm checking my surroundings to make it as visually appealing as possible. I'm looking at the background, um, seeing if the background adds to the image or takes away. I'm, I'm checking for different compositional uh, options as I'm looking through my viewfinder. In addition to that, I'm also trying to simplify, making sure there's not things inside my camera or in my range as I'm looking through my camera, making sure there's not things that are distracting or taking away from my subject. And lastly, I'm making sure that I have the correct setting. If I want a blurred background, well, I'm making sure that my aperture is wide open so that it will blur the background. If I want to have my background in focus, well, I'm making sure that I close my aperture down so that it will be in focus. But those are the type of things that I'm doing when I'm looking through the viewfinder of my camera. And the reason this is important is because what we do within the space of our camera enables us to create stunning images that invites the viewers into a whole new world and a whole new way of seeing things. And our ability to create beautiful compositions is really what will determine what kind of photographer we will be and what type of impact our photographs will have upon others. And so what is composition? Composition is how we set up the elements within our camera space to create a compelling image. The goal of composition is to guide the eyes of your viewers to the main subject. And there are many methods that you can use to accomplish this. And that's what we're gonna be looking at over the next couple of weeks, is the various methods of composition that you can use to create exceptional images. Once you've decided on a subject, it's time to begin the search on the best possible arrangement for your image. Now this will take patience and focus, unless of course you're shooting wildlife or sports or some other type of action, you just need to get your camera ready and you need to fire off as many shots as you possibly can when the action's going on in the hopes that you're gonna capture a couple of really nice images. However, in most cases in photography, you're gonna have time to set up your subject and your image in a way that will be visually appealing. You're gonna be able to study the subject, study your surroundings, uh, making sure you're simplifying and really trying to create the best possible, most appealing image that you can. But it does take some patience and it takes a little bit of know-how. That's what we're gonna be looking at in this week's episode. You can liken this part of photography to a lion that circles its prey, waiting for that right moment to attack. Not that photographers are attacking anything, but in, in, in the same way, we need to circle the perimeter of our subject if space is available and we have the time to do so because we wanna look at our subject from many different angles. We wanna look high and low. We wanna look behind and really study our subject and really study our surroundings to figure out what the best possible composition for our image is. Again, we don't want to be a snapshot camera person where we just take a snapshot and hope for the best. We want to take our time and we want to really invest our energy in creating the best possible image. And that's what I hope to help you begin doing with this episode. The first thing we're going to look at is our surroundings by learning to study the space surrounding our subject. Again, as I already mentioned, 
in order to study the space surrounding your subject, you're gonna need to move around. You're gonna need to look high and low, look behind and in front, and you're gonna wanna look at all the different compositional uh, tools that are available to you before you take the picture. In fact, looking at this next image, this next series of photos were taken at the Jewish cemetery in Frankfurt, Germany. This particular wall, which has a cemetery on the other side, has the names of many Jewish victims of the evil Nazi regime whose bodies were never recovered. By placing the stones on the top of their names, loved ones show that they have been there and that the individual's memory continues to live on in and through them. Special care is taken in choosing a stone to put on the grave of a loved one, usually a stone from an event where the loved one was greatly missed, or simply a special place they had been together at some point in the past. I captured this while touring the grounds with my wife and friends. It was an overcast day and a very somber time at this location, and I tried to capture the feeling of the moment with these particular shots. In the first image, you can see that I captured this image from straight on, where I have a picture of 15 names. To me, this is a nicely composed image, and I'm really happy with it. In the second image, I decided to take a picture of a single name from up close, which I think also has some appeal to it. But in this third image, which happens to be my favorite composition of the three, I use selective focus by placing the attention upon the name of Elsie Lewald, who died in Auschwitz the infamous Nazi concentration camp. And I also used a composition technique that we will look at in next week's episode called Leading Lines. By using the other memorial stones with other victims' names as leading lines that move out into the unknown distance, symbolizing the unknown amount of lives that were lost during the Holocaust. As we just saw, I took three different images at the Holocaust Memorial in Frankfurt, Germany. And I'm happy with all three of the images. But to me, the most important or the most memorable image was the last image with Elsie Lewald. And the reason this was the most memorable and the most important image for me was because I feel that that had the most compositional appeal and was the one that really keeps my eyes focused in, uh, on the image and studying this picture the most. Let's look at one more set of images where you can see that I tried different angles of composition to find the right image of a green sea turtle in Hawaii. This first image I took of the green sea turtle, I have a picture of him with the background blurred a bit. By having a large aperture, I was able to blur the background and create a somewhat soft but nice image. The second image you see here of the green sea turtle, I have a picture of him that I captured with a wide angle lens so that I could have him as well as the seascape behind him in focus. And I really like the look of this image as well. But the third image of the green sea turtle, I have a close-up picture of him with my telephoto lens, where you can see great detail in him. You can see his face and skin, and you can see the strains of sand that are on his flippers. And the reason we are able to see these details of the turtle is because we have zoomed in for a different compositional approach. And so with this green sea turtle, as well as the memorial site from Frankfurt, Germany, I hope I was able to show you the different approaches that you can take when you are studying the compositional space surrounding your subject. Another way we can study the space around our subject is by getting to a higher vantage point. Try to get up higher above your subject and see what that looks like. I captured this image of my son on Easter Sunday when he was two years old. Instead of taking the typical picture at eye level, I decided to approach this one from above. And though we can't see his face, this is a much more meaningful image to me some seven years later due to the fact that it was his first Easter egg hunt and this image clearly portrays that he was Easter egg hunting. In this second image of the cityscape, I was high atop a building in Frankfurt, Germany when I captured this image of the city below. And I just love how the street acts as a leading line that heads straight into the green trees. There is a beautiful color pattern in this image as well, 
between the beautiful gray rooftops as well as the gray buildings and the green trees that are spread throughout. The green and gray just make a really wonderful contrast of color for me. Another way we can study the space surrounding our subject is by getting down on our subject's level, especially if we're photographing children or pets or possibly even flowers or other animals in nature. And so it's a really good idea to get low to the ground at times as well. When I captured the image of this dog, I was laying flat on my belly in the grass at the park. Sure, it was a little uncomfortable for me to be sprawled out across the grass like that. However, it had to happen if I wanted to make this shot happen. Because this image would not look the same if I would have taken it from above. Let me show you what I mean. Here is a similar image of the same dog from above. This is a really cute dog, of course. And if it were my dog, I would be happy to have both images. However, as a photographer, I appreciate this first image of being down at the dog's level a whole lot more than the image that I captured from above. Looking at the dog from this level, it just looks as if this dog has everything going on. This dog is at the top of his game. Another way we can study the space surrounding our subject is from a much closer vantage point using a macro lens or even a telephoto lens. There are going to be times when you're going to want to get up close. Now, I'm not using a macro lens here, of course. Otherwise, I could have gotten even closer to this bee. But I am using my 1 to 400 millimeter lens, which can be used in macro situations. And the reason I share this image with you is just to show you that if you get in really close to insects or other subjects, you can see an entirely new world. On the image of this bee, you can actually see pollen that is in his hair. In this next image, you can see another bee that is doing what bees do, which is collecting nectar. In fact, did you know that a honeybee must gather nectar from 2 million flowers and has to fly about 90,000 miles, which is three times around the globe to make one pound of honey? Isn't that amazing? And by getting in close with your camera, you are able to capture this phenomenal process in action, just as I did here. Another way we can study the space surrounding our subject is from a wide angle vantage point. In this next image, I ended up going wide by using my wide angle lens. And the reason for this is because I not only wanted to have the green sea turtle in focus, but I also wanted to have this beautiful seascape and sunset in focus. And by using my wide angle lens, I was able to get the green sea turtle in focus and also capture the beautiful landscape behind it, including the ocean, the colorful sunset, and the powerful looking storm clouds above. And when we create the right composition, we can tell stories that are much more inspiring. In fact, I've actually titled this image Endangered Beauty because this image of the endangered green sea turtle epitomizes that. You see, I really appreciate the beautiful colors within this photo, as well as the storm clouds that are brewing overhead as there is powerful symbolism in the struggle that the green sea turtle has experienced over the years due to the fact that the green sea turtle was once considered in real danger of extinction. But Hawaiian green sea turtles have seen a dramatic increase in population under the protection of the U.S. Endangered Species Act, which of course is credited to the hard work of conservationists. In this week's episode on photographic composition, we have been looking at the importance of learning how to study the space surrounding our subject. And in order to study the space surrounding our subject, we've got to be able to look at our subject from every possible angle, whether it's going up high or getting down low, or whether it's on one side or the other or getting behind or in front. We've got to look at every possible angle so that we could hopefully come up with the most appealing and most inspiring composition possible. By learning to think along these lines and study your subject in this manner, you will begin developing the eye of a photographer and I am confident that you will begin seeing a noticeable improvement in your photographs. Next week we're going to continue looking at the importance that composition plays in photography and I'm going to be sharing with you more methods that you'll be able to put in your photographer's toolbox so that you can begin taking better images on a consistent basis. 
If you like this week's episode, can you do me a big favor and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button? This lets YouTube know that you like this content and you want to see more of it. And this will also get my channel out to a broader audience. And I'd really appreciate the support. Well, I hope to see you next week. And until then, go out and capture the world.